Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby Meets Bling. Tonight's project is going to be a Valentine's project for sure, but it is going to have a French country shabby chic feel. You are watching Valentine's. You are loved. It can't sleep creations collaboration. I'd like to thank my co-host Annie of Crafting with Indiana Jones and Monica from Up All Night DIY for joining me tonight. You will find the links to their channels as well as this playlist in the description box below. My Valentine's project starts with this frame and since we know that I have enough frames to start my own frame shop, <laughs> I'm going to use one of these. I have two of these actually and you can see there's some depth to it. I do have the glass, but I will not be using the glass. I did pick these up at a thrift shop. First and foremost, we are going to give it a light sandy, which is a definite clue as to what happens next. I'm going to paint. Of course I am. But uh, just to make sure our paint adheres nicely, I am giving it a quick sandy. Friday is not being much of a help, so I'll do it myself. We are totally sanded, so... Oh, let's paint. Let's paint. I am using a house paint and it is one of my favorite colors. I've used it before. I will be using it again. I will use this thing till it's gone or it's too gunky to actually use. It is my coffee house and it is a flat interior paint. For big projects, I tend to use house paint because I am thrifty. I'm not cheap, but you know what? I want something for my money. So do yourself a favor. Go pick up a big old gallon of interior house paint and use it. Pick a color that will endure the test of all the trends and fads that come and go and stick with the classics. And you will be very, very happy. For the back of my frame, I am using a piece of MDF. I don't like MDF. Um... I know I've mentioned that before. I'd prefer it to be wood, but I had this on hand, so I uh, cut it to fit, and I'm using it. I don't like to waste anything, so I am painting it in that same coffee house paint front and back. None of this. This will really be visible when I'm done with this project, but just in case someone flips it over, I want a finished, a finished surface because you know me, I have issues, so let's get it all painted and any reason to paint <laughs> I'm going to take it. I picked up this beautiful fabric. It was on the blue tag clearance at $6.97 with an additional 20% off and I got it at Joann Fabrics and it is a polyester but it is a linen look and it truly looks and feels like linen. So I will be using this to cover the back plate our board, our MDF. <laughs> We're gonna cover that MDF and make it a bye bye. So I am very carefully laying it out. I don't want any wrinkles and I don't need a lot because it's gonna be stapled right around the backside, almost like I'm just basically upholstering this thing. So I'm gonna lay it out and I'm gonna cut out the amount I need. And as I go, I'm using basic upholstery rules. <laughs> <laughs> and guidelines to completely cover the board. Uh, you start in the middle on either side and then you go to the top and bottom of either side. You pull nice and tight. You get all your screws, excuse me, you get all your staples in and you have a beautifully upholstered board. I have a motto and my motto is, if you can light it up, you should light it up. And I am going to be true to my motto and I'm going to light up this frame. I will be using two strands of the copper wire little fairy lights from the Dollar Tree. And I have a little groove in my frame that I'm tucking that wire into way deep. And then I'm putting a little dab of hot glue above it where that little little crack is that way the wire can't come out unless I want it to I'm not actually gluing the wire per se I'm gluing a little seal over the crack so it is trapped and it's trapped in there and I will work my way around I'm starting in the middle at the bottom and I'm working my way around the entire frame until I run out of lights with this one strand I then come back with the second strand 
and go in the opposite direction. And since these don't go all the way around, they will overlap, but I'm making sure the lights themselves kind of skip so one strand will not be right on top of the other. And that way I've got them dispersed in a pleasing manner, shall we say. We all know I love metal ribbon. And as you can see, I have a plethora. When I see it, I pick it up. I've picked up at the Dollar Tree three different types. And I also, which are not shown here, have a few different uh, designs from Hobby Lobby. And I will be using one of these to enhance the exterior of my frame. This one in particular. First, I need to measure out uh, exact lengths for each side of the frame and I will go a little beyond of what I need to use because I will be mitering all my corners. Now to see how I miter my corners I will um, add a link to uh, the video where I do so with the metal ribbon and once I have my my sides all measured and cut then I will paint my metal ribbon gold, antique gold, as you can see here. And now I am adhering my metal ribbon to the frame. And I am drilling through it every three or four inches or so. And I am going to attach my metal ribbon with a tiny brass brad. I could have chosen to glue this metal ribbon on, but you would have had to clamp it in many, many places. And there was always the likelihood, because this is such a fine filigree, that you would see the glue in between the little parts of the ribbon. And I did not want that. I want it to be nice and smooth and clean. I picked up these little galvanized letters uh, resale. And it was just a little bundle and I always, I always buy, I literally have a huge Rubbermaid of different letters, uh, wood and metal. And I even have a couple porcelain ones, um, big, small, you name it, I have it. And I knew that these letters would come in handy. All I'm missing is a V. That's all I'm missing. I am using this Krylon Fusion metallic gold which looks antique gold. It is not brilliant in any way to paint my L, my O, and my E to match my metal ribbon. So we are missing that V. And what would take its place? Hmm. <laughs> How about a little heart? Not the entire heart. I'm just going to use the bottom of this little heart tin. I will be saving the, the lid with that cute little cherub on there for another project. But I'm going to clean this up and we're gonna paint. I am using a plaid folk art mat. Beautiful, beautiful cottage rose paint. And I will be painting the entire backside and the sides of this little tin heart. And then, yes, and then we are going to enhance her. I did give her two coats. I have a little bit of my podge on an old lid and I will be adding my fine extra fine pumpkin glitter my fine soft pink holographic glitter equal parts of all three and then I'm coming in with another fine glitter that is rose gold and FYI the Mod Podge is a matte I'm gonna stir it up really well and I'm gonna enhance my heart as well as uh, what's coming next. Here I have one of my cute little cake doodads, and of course it's a cherub. It's Valentine's Day. I have used some of my scrap of foam to fill in the back of my little cherub, so that way I'll be able to glue her to the front of my covered board. And now I'm painting her, and I am painting her coffee house the exact same color as our frame so that it kind of all melds together and blends beautifully. These little cake doodads I did buy resale and I bought a ton of them and there was everything in there from wedding bells to columns. I have used these in so many different projects and uh, if I ever see any more, I'm going to get them. So I suggest maybe you do the same because they are really versatile. They don't need to be just put on a cake. And after I'm done painting my little cherub, I'm going to enhance her wings with some of that Mod Podge 
glitter that we just created and I'm also going to use some ribbon to enhance her toga. <laughs> I don't know what that thing is called wrapped around her the fabric. Yes, toga. It's a toga. I will also be using this rose gold and pink ribbon and I might, I just might be using some of these hearts. These little poofy hearts and these little flat hearts. And guaranteed if I do, I will be painting them. I have assembled my Valentine's light box and now I wish to share it with all of you. Here's our sweet little cherub, our cake doodad. Hard to believe she's nothing more, was nothing more than a cake decoration. And you can see her little toga, how it looks like it's one piece of fabric now. And it feels like one piece of fabric since I added the Mod Podge and that glitter. And you can see I glittered her wings. And she is perched ever so sweetly on the L, the L for love. And I do love her. I think she looks adorable. Let's check out our heart, our V, just the bottom of a Valentine tin, a thrifted Valentine tin, nothing more. But now it's a, a V, a V in our love. You can see how I ran the ribbon all the way through the heart itself and down the other side and out the frame. And there is that beautiful, filigree metal ribbon. It is so pretty and even prettier with that antique gold paint on. She's pretty. Oh, I love her. And there you get a good look at the entire light box. That's right. <laughs> Remember, it's a light box. Should we light it up? Let's light it up. There it is. All lit up. Ever so gorgeous. And you can see that soft pink fabric that looks oh so much like linen. It is so soft, you guys. It is just absolutely beautiful. And you can see how that ribbon that I used runs right through the middle of my heart. Just like an arrow. Like Cupid's arrow. <laughs> and it's simple, yet elegant. That old saying, sometimes less is more, really holds true especially in this case. It's just a beautiful accent piece just sitting in my dining room on a little easel. But I did make it versatile. I made it so you can also hang it. Here it is, not lit. So you can see it looks beautiful with no lights. But then again, here it is lit, looking just as fabulous. Thank you again, Annie and Monica, for joining me tonight, as well as a bunch of wonderful creators. You'll find the links to Annie and Monica's channels, as well as the playlist in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your family, your friends, anyone that loves a Valentine's or a shabby chic French country decor. You can follow me on Instagram, and don't forget to check out my shop on Etsy. Leave me a comment. I would absolutely love to hear from you. The best way to support my channel is to subscribe, so don't forget to subscribe. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.